Hey everyone, Christian here, and I was not sure if I had made a proper vlog on uh, Elias Giensis, the African oil bomb, but here's such a nice specimen that I wanted to do one on a real nice sized one. Now, I've known this palm since uh, the crown was sitting on the ground, and uh, it has grown about 15 feet of wood, or an unclear wood, it'll eventually, petioles will eventually drop off um, in about 12 years. So it's a relatively fast grower once it gets going, but this palm was very popular in Florida in the, uh, probably since, you know, since Florida was starting to get built all the way up until the 80s and 90s, when people realized it was kind of a, it, it creates quite a bit of, of um, what's it called, of leaf litter. Uh, it is, can be cold sensitive and can, uh, in a frost, these can all turn, not they won't all turn brown, but they can start browning off in a freeze, they'll definitely turn brown. But they're actually very uh, crown hardy. So Elias giensis um, is native to West Central Africa, although it seems to grow throughout the continent now, anywhere that, uh, you know, is pretty much frost free. So it's a, uh, it is a staple in uh, in Africa. It, it provides a lot of. This is the number one palm that provides palm oil throughout Asia and Africa, and unfortunately, a lot of uh, palm plantations are being built in Asia to grow this plant for its oil production. So a lot of things that you may eat that uh, you know have a, uh, have an oil base to them, you'll be surprised how much palm oil is in the foods that you eat. So. Um, I'm not saying that you eat you know, stuff of palm oil, you're causing rainforest deforestation, but if, um, I think if people knew how much the rainforest is being cut down, say in Borneo or um, Malaysia for this growth, or even in Africa, uh, they might try an alternative. So obviously it's a massive palm. You want it's about as, a, it's, it has a leaf spread way larger than a Canary Island date, but it has a similar size trunk if you include the, uh, the petiole bases. Um, it, not quite as thick, but close enough. And uh, very, it's very large and pinnate. As you can see, these leaves are about probably 20 feet long. And one cool thing about this palm, well, I mean, it's not as cool when it gets larger, but the, uh, the fruit will actually grow out like right, I would get in closer, but there's just too many spiny plants that in my way there. Uh, the fruit uh, actually will grow right up against the trunk. So you can just actually just reach right in and pick the fruit up. And uh, they don't, they don't, it doesn't hang. So I, th I think I always thought that was kind of neat. It has this black fruit. <clears throat> this is so if you guys watched the vlog about a week ago of the uh, Idol Latica um, version of this palm, you can see they, they differ quite greatly. This is a much more larger, excuse me, beefier specimen. And um, it seems to have kind of become an emergent, you know, out, out it's, in the, it's in the top of the canopy right now. So the seed of this palm, it has a weird shape to it. I don't know how to best explain it other than it's kind of. Uh, it is irregular. It it kind of tapers from like a fatter point to a to more of like a uh, a thinner area, and it kind of just shaves itself off as like in a it squares off. Um, I'm trying to think the best uh, way to explain uh, the size, but I wish I had a seed for explanation. But it looks a lot like a pandanus seed, actually. Um, that's that's the best way I can explain it. It's about an, uh, an inch long three quarters of an inch wide or so but again it's a regular so it's not doesn't hold those dimensions throughout the seed and uh these are the kind of they, they're very tough they require a lot of heat and humidity to germinate uh they don't do well um indoors this is definitely a tropical plant it's, it's definitely a zone 10. i've seen it grown again in, in parts of 9a where i'm sure it die this palm can take a lot of diebacks i mean uh if it does freeze it will grow back but it won't ever really grow a full crown like this that you can see here so um, but again, it is, even though it isn't really grow much in Florida anymore, it is still a, uh, really cool palm to, to look at. It does, you know, you will have to do a little bit of trimming. It isn't a crown shafted palm, but, um, you know, if you, for those, you know, people who are dedicated to growing, you know, big beefy plants, this is definitely one of them. Uh, a lot of people that are kind of palm snobs will say, oh, I don't want to grow that. That's a ratty plant, or there's so many of them. It's too common. Um, you know, it's all up to who, what people enjoy. I mean, this is this provides a ton of canopy for the area, so that's a big plus. And you know, every every plant requires some sort of maintenance to look really nice. So, um, but yeah, again, it's it's a, you know, it's one of those 10A plants that you know will still get burnt back, 
um, in a an occasional frost or freeze, but it it will it will grow back as fast as it burned. So you really can um, you know once it emerges, especially out of the ground, it there'll be the frost and freezes will be less frequent. So sorry about the the movement in the um, the camera. The, the I have to brush off mosquitoes once in a while here, but um, yeah, that's about it for the African oil. I think I like I said I did a vlog before about it, but if I didn't. Um, maybe I didn't do it as, uh, you know, didn't do as, uh, specific of a vlog on it. So here's a second one. If, it, if the first one doesn't, if the first one does exist, if not, then here's the first one. So, um, anyway, yeah, if you guys have any, uh, questions about, uh, the African oil, um, and it's oil production, leave it down below. If you are new to the channel and want to see more vlogs like this, go ahead and subscribe and you can press the notification button and see us as we go live. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and I'll see everyone next time.